With the US Open series well underway and the first hardcore matches of the second half of the season getting underway, we had some big winners last week and some big results as well. Not so many changes in the top 10, but we do have changes outside the top 10. Let's go see who won last week. So starting on the WTA, we had a couple of clay court events. One of the last clay court events in Switzerland with Chocchi Reddo getting the win over Burrell 7-5-4-6-6-4. Over the Hamburg Open, we had Ruse winning her first title 6-love 7-6 against Noah Akuj. And then at the Poland Open, the first hardcore tennis tournament since Miami all the way back in March and Iga Sviantek starting a title defense at the US Open with some good form 6-love six 6-1 six against Sigmund in that final winning her first 250 event of her career as well and of course winning her first title at home as well in front of the Polish crowd so those are the winners on the WTA this week on the men's side of things we also had three tournaments starting in Umag with Poprin taking out Vavrinka 6-7 6-3 6-4 to lift his second trophy and beating a great like Stan on clay is a massive massive win over in Atlanta, the first hardcore event since Miami, we had Taylor Fritz, 7-5-6-7-6-4, beating Vukic in the final. So he's getting his US Open campaign off to a good start. And then the biggest tournament of the week, the Hamburg Open on the clay, Sasha Zverev getting the win over Jera, 7-5-6-3, winning his 20th title and his first title since being injured from last year's Roland Garros. So good to see Zverev back on the winner's list. And he got a big boost in the rankings because of that 500 points that he gained in Hamburg. Having a look at the players outside the top 10 that went up in the rankings this week, Ruse went up 18 spots into number 42 a career high for her and her first ever title on the WTA she has been playing for a while so career high ranking after getting her first trophy Alexander Zverev he's gone up three spots number 16 in the world after winning his first trophy coming back from injury and Poprin he's gone up 33 spots to number 57 which is a career high for him after winning in Umag so the winners of last week getting a big boost in the rankings players that have gone down the rankings Buskova she's gone down 10 spots to number 39 in the world after losing points from the Prague Open last year but she can make that up this week if she does end up winning the tournament. Roberto Batista Ragu also went down seven spots to number 32 in the world after failing to defend the points that he made in Kitzbühel last year. But of course, that's happening this week, so maybe he can make those up. And Brandon Nakashima, he's gone down 12 spots to number 70 in the world after losing points from last year's Atlanta Open that he wasn't able to replicate this year, making the quarterfinals. So a few players there that have gone down the rankings after losing a lot of points. Let's start with the WTA rankings now. And as I said at the start, not too many changes with Sviantek extending her lead against Sabah Sabalenka after winning this week in Poland. Sabalenka staying at number two with Rabakina at three. Pagula just behind at number four. But we do have a change in the middle with Garcia dropping down to number six and Onstruberg going up to number five. And that's because Garcia won the Poland Open last year, didn't play this year, lost a lot of points and drops down the rankings because of it. Goff comes in at number seven with Kvitova at eight, Zachary at nine and Von Drusova rounding out the top 10 for this week. Having a look at the race of the finals now and still only the two players qualified with Sabalenka and Sviantek qualified for the WTA finals. Rabakina is not too far behind and with a couple of good weeks on the hard court, she could qualify before the US Open. Pagula stays at number four with Von Drusser at five, Jabur at six, Kvitova at seven, Mukova at number eight, Goff at nine, and Bencic rounds out the top 10. But a lot of those players are playing next week in Washington, which is a WTA 500 event. So expect some changes because there's a lot of points up for grabs next week. Jumping over the men's side of the rankings now. And again, no changes to the top 10 with Alcaraz staying at number one. Dropping points though, because he didn't play Hamburg where he made the final last year. So he did drop some points, closing that gap with Djokovic at number two. Medvedev at three with Rude at number four. City Pass comes in at five with Runa at six. Rublev just behind at number seven with Sinner at eight. Fritz at nine. Despite winning the Atlanta Open, he's still a little bit far away from Sinner. And Tiafo rounds out the top 10 for this week. Looking at the race of the finals and still only Alcaraz has qualified based on points. Of course, Djokovic is qualified because of the Grand Slam rule, but he's only about 100 points away from qualifying on his own. So by the time we get to Cincinnati, he would have qualified on his points. Medvedev comes in at three with Rublev at number four. Sitipats at five with Sinner at six. Runa at seven. Rude at eight. With Fritz at number nine. And Alexander Zverev. He jumps into the top ten after winning in Hamburg, pushing Hashinov out of the top ten down to number eleven. So Zverev winning one of the biggest trophies in recent memory for him and getting into that race of the finals. And he has won a couple of ATP finals as well. So he might be able to sneak in there if he has some good American hardcourt season and get himself qualified eventually for the ATP finals, which would be really fun to see Zverev back in that spot. So not too much to talk about with the rankings. I mean, some good stories with, you know, Zverev winning his first title from coming back from injury and getting a lot of points for that and putting himself in the finals race. But next week, we got Washington for the men and the women. That's a massive tournament for both of them. 500 events for both. And then, of course, Canada and Cincinnati coming up after that. So a lot of points up for grabs over the next couple of weeks. And the changes of the rankings will be a lot more over the next couple of weeks, especially before the US Open. But 
Let me know down in the comments below. What are you most interested to see in the rankings this week? Or who are you most scared for in the coming weeks? Because, of course, Alcaraz hanging on to that number one spot. Djokovic has no points to defend because he didn't play in America last year. So can Alcaraz stay number one? I think that's the biggest concern. And can Sviantec stay number one before the US Open? Or is Sabalenka going to be able to take her over? So number one rankings are still a little bit shaky. But the other rankings for this week, nothing really big to report on.